Time to go live on Facebook and do the podcast on Spotify. And as you can see... I'm in a store, by the way. This is crazy. I'm supposed to get all my devices fixed. The store was supposed to open over a half hour ago. The guy hasn't shown up yet, so I got to keep busy. So here comes my next live and um, podcast, and I hope it's getting recorded. And if not, this was a good practice session. Hello, and welcome back to my podcast of the script to my TV hit show, Chrysalis, The Family Adventures. Today, I'm excited to present episode three, Josh Suspended, Samantha's Gay Encounter. To briefly synopse, at a meeting with the school principal, Joey and Giselle learned the details of Josh's suspension, including that Josh had had Joey's account for the $10,000. The principal decides not to report Josh's crimes and gives Joey full responsibility for Josh. In the schoolyard, Samantha and her friend Kamala talk about Josh's suspension. Kamala is a black, biracial person combating Samantha's indifference, saying it would be a major issue in a black family. They dispute the value of boys, and Samantha's attachment to her phone upsets Kamala who asks her to stop texting and pay attention to her. At home, Joey, really pissed, is very stern with Josh, while Giselle tries to be strict in a more compassionate way. She goes upstairs to talk to Josh, but when she comes down, she clearly is wiped out, impatient and demanding a massage. Mike, who is there, learns of Josh's misdeeds. He criticizes Joey's angry discipline, and they get into another semi-political tip. Since Mike is a professor, Joey asks him to be the one to homeschool Josh. Josh happens to be coming down to the kitchen, and Mike goes in to talk to him. They bond over their voracious appetite for cookies, while Mike engages him about doing the right, not the expedient thing. Denies his request to sneak in computer time and lets him know about the homeschooling. It becomes clear Josh really likes his grandfather. Samantha enters the house with Kamala, impatient to bring her friend upstairs. After they've gone upstairs, Joey says, Kamala looks like a boy, and gets into a whole stir about it with Mike and Giselle. Meanwhile, up in Samantha's bedroom, the two girls are engaged in a passionate kiss. And now, without further ado, let's sit back and enjoy this reading of episode three, Josh Suspended, Samantha's Gay Encounter. Fade in. Voiceover. Previously on Christmas, the family adventures. Internal, the house, living room, day. Giselle. Josh's delinquency? Joey. The kid didn't turn in his homework again. Cut to... Internal, the house, living room, dining area, day. Giselle. The school says you were delinquent. Josh. Delinquent? I don't have a clue what you're talking about. Joey. Well, how about this, Smarty? Take a look here. Shows him his phone. Josh. Oh, that's not reliable. You know how easy it is to hack into a cell phone? Cut to. Internal, the house, living room, dining area, night. Image. Text being typed. User. Flashes. You gotta fix my school records so they look normal. All of a sudden, the phone is yanked out from under him. That is Josh. Joey, looking at phone. Fix my school records so they look normal. Josh looks really trapped and helpless. Cut to internal, the house, kitchen, dining area, day. Samantha. He's upset you took away his phone. Cut to internal, high school, hallway, day. Josh. Hey, you have to. Michael, in disbelief. Give you my cell phone? Cut to internal, boys' bathroom, day, image, text being typed, Valentina. Okay, send me $100 US in iTunes cards, and I'll get completely naked for you. Image, text being typed, Joshua. I can't, baby. I'm on someone else's phone now. He'll kill me if I hack into my father's account now. Cut to caption. And now, internal, school principal's office, dusk. Joey, Giselle... Principal Goodman and Michael's parents 
a very dejected Josh, as well as Mike, are sitting around a table, Principal Goodman, looking at each as if in a circular motion. Okay, folks, we have a very serious situation here. Caption. And now, continuing on, in and out of the cocoon, theme music slash display. Caption. The family adventure continues. Principal Goodman. We've been able to discover a series of hacks that are not only a violation of school policy, but a serious crime that can mean jail time. Joey. Jail time? Principal Goodman. Hang on. It is the school's policy to try to resolve the matter in the best way possible. We haven't reported this crime because we believe this can still be a teachable moment. The boys show great relief, Principal Goodman. What we recommend is a permanent suspension for Josh and summer school for Michael because you were only an accomplice, Joey. How is suspension a teachable moment? It's not us you should be punishing, Principal Goodman. Mr. Next to Joey for name. Joey doesn't respond. Goodman breathes a sigh of disgust, Principal Goodman. Don't think that acting dumb is going to change my mind. Joey, well, that just goes to show how intelligent you are. Principal Goodman, excuse me? Joey, if I was acting dumb, you'd know it. Principal Goodman, I rest my case about where he gets his mental deficiency from. We are recommending homeschooling and that he take an equivalency test. Josh, this will go on your record permanently as these hacks not only involve alteration of school records, but theft large sums of money. The adults make unpleasant noises of shocked dismay, while Michael gives an angry look at Josh. Principal Goodman, but we won't report you, so you'll still have a clean record with the legal system. But I warn you, you don't want to get on the wrong side of the law. Giselle, Principal Goodman, what do you mean by large sums of money? Why is this the first we're hearing about this? Principal Goodman, we discovered on Michael's phone a transcript of a conversation between Josh and a young lady in the Ukraine in which he admitted to having sent money. Everybody, especially Giselle and Joey, looks and sounds shocked. Josh pales blank. Giselle, I don't believe it. Joey clenching his teeth. I'm going to kill that boy. Giselle restraining him gently with her arms on his. Wait a minute, Joey. We don't even know if it's the same thing that happened to you. Principal Goodman, how much money was discovered hacked? Josh freezes, really worried and really scared. Principal Goodman, unfortunately, the transcript doesn't say. The young lady asked him for $100, and Josh refused, saying he didn't want to get Michael in trouble, which is admirable and why I see hope for this boy, in spite of how much trouble he's in. Joey, wait a second. He didn't want to get Michael in trouble, but thought nothing of stealing $10,000 of our hard-earned money? You must really not like me, Principal. Everybody gasps. Principal Goodman. I don't. But wow, $10,000. Makes me almost feel sorry for you. But I'm going to let that be your problem, since it doesn't concern the school. He's all yours, Joey, half under his breath. Yeah, figures. But don't worry, with intense anger still under his breath, he'll get everything he deserves. External, schoolyard, day. Samantha is sitting on the ground, phone in hand, leaning against the concrete wall, together with her friend, Kamala, a light-skinned girl of color, with frizzy, almost unkempt hair, unordered, sometimes close-cropped, sometimes thick dreads, and kinks sticking out, looking somewhat like a boy. Kamala. Wait. Your brother got suspended? Oh, my God. Samantha, half into her phone, half taking in Kamala. Yeah, it's no big deal. Kamala, you're not worried how it will reflect on you? Samantha, why should I? He's him and I'm me. Kamala, I don't know. If it were my brother, I think I'd be worried. Samantha, why? I don't get it. Kamala, I don't know. Maybe it's a black thing. Anything that a family member does, you're judged for Samantha, really? Well, that's wrong. Don't let what other people say about your brother bring you down. Brothers are supposed to be stupid. Kamala, I don't really. Samantha, unless they're good-looking and they're not your brother. Kamala, that's not true. 
Just because someone's good looking doesn't make them smart. Lots of good looking boys are real stupid. Look, I don't really have a brother. I just meant fa a family member in general. Why are you always in your phone, Samantha? I'm not always in my phone, Kamala. Yes, you are. Every time I see you. Can't you check out for a change? Samantha puts her phone down. Samantha, are you happy? Kamala, all right. Internal, the house, living room, day. A very upset Joey and an anxious Giselle reaching her arms to him and trying to calm him in front of a very scared Josh. Joey, you're very lucky I didn't beat the crap out of you. Giselle, honey, please let me talk to him. What daddy's trying to say, Joey, interrupting. I don't need you to talk for me. He's very lucky he's still in one piece. Giselle, what we're trying to tell you, Josh, is things are going to be very different. Joey, first of all, you're grounded. You just come down for family meals, no television, and no computer. Giselle looks at Josh with a mixture of sympathy and worry. Joey, second of all, we're locking up your phone for good. You don't know how to use it responsibly. Giselle, it's for your own good, honey. Joey, yeah, like that ever worked. Giselle, hey, that was totally unnecessary. Joey, third, you're going to pay back every penny of that $10,000. Josh, how am I going to do that, being confined to my room with no electronic device? Joey, that's your problem, not mine. You're pretty smart fixing your school records, sending my money to a foreign country. You can figure this one out, too. Giselle, oh, Joey, Joey, we'll figure out something. Be quiet. To Josh, now go to your room. I don't want to see you no more. He goes upstairs, expressionless. Joey, you got to figure out some way to lock his door so he can't get out. Call the locksmith and tell him to come over. Now i got to deal with this credit card issue so he can get back the trust of the company. Giselle comes over and massages Joey. Giselle, honey, just remember, he's just a boy who's really smart, but in a world he doesn't really doesn't understand. Josh is too young to understand the dangers of the tech world. Joey, you really got to be kidding he stole our money and altered his school records. He knew what he was doing. Giselle, honey, listen. Let's not act from our emotions. He needs us. He needs to know you care and support him. Joey, sarcastic, making a face. He needs to know I care and support him. That's all you can think of. I think my not beating the crap out of him is more than enough to show I care, which I really don't right now. Giselle, fine, I'll go talk to him. She goes upstairs, fade out, fade in, internal living room, day. Giselle comes down from upstairs looking and feeling exasperated. Mike is there with Joey. Giselle, hi Mike. Mike, hi Giselle, how's it going? Giselle, don't answer to Joey. Darling, get me a cool wet pad and give me a massage. After that, I'm going to take a facial soap and I don't want to be disturbed. Joey. I told you not to waste your time on that boy. Giselle, Joey, he's our son. Mike, I can talk to him. Joey, Snickers. Giselle, there's a time in a boy's life no one ever tells you about when he ceases to be a boy, but he's far from being a man either. Mike, waxing poetic. Giselle, it's that hideous period called teenagerhood. And then we get tortured again with it as parents. Joey, well, I don't know about other teenagers, but this one's definitely a hideous monster from hell. Mike, what happened? Joey, don't ask. Mike, okay. Giselle, interrupted. Come on, Joey, I don't want to wait all day on that mask and massage. Joey, focusing on Mike. Don't worry, this is only the beginning of a long hell from him. Two can play that game. Mike, and what do you hope to accomplish by this? Giselle, screaming. Hey, stop ignoring me. Get me what I ask. Joey gets up and starts toward the stairs. Joey, this from the woman who refuses to get me a beer after work. Giselle, oh, Joey, stop. You know I get that beer most of the time. Plus, I never ask you to do anything. Now stop your whining. Joey goes upstairs. Mike, looking out and up, expressing the room's tension on him. So... Looks around at Giselle, who's sitting back, almost collapsed on the couch. Mike... Anybody going to tell me what just happened with my grandson? Giselle, oh, sorry, Mike. Too much for us at, at once. Well, 
He didn't just hack the school records. Get this. He hacked into his dad's credit card account and sent $10,000 to some strange woman in Ukraine. Mike, grinning with incredulity. You're kidding, Giselle. Do I look like I'm kidding? Mike, almost laughing. So that's what that whole thing with Ukraine was about? Giselle, and you find this whole thing funny? Mike, no, no. Joey returns with a mask, lotion, and sponges. Joey, the school says it's my fault he turned into this. Meanwhile, who's the one supposed to be keeping an eye on him all day while his parents are at work? But don't worry, I'm going to show them what real discipline is. In his tension, he starts to rub his hands in the lotion and slap it on Giselle's face. But she breaks away, takes the stuff, and gets up. Giselle, never mind, I'll do it myself. She proceeds to go upstairs. Mike, Joey... Taking your anger out on your kid isn't going to fix your problems, and it isn't going to fix him. Joey, don't you have a home to go to? Mike, shrugging in futility. Look, Joey, I know you're stressed right now. Joey interrupted. I'm not stressed. I just got saddled for some unknown reason with a son who's a complete moron and a society so messed up, you really can't blame the boy for what he done. Mike. I'm glad to hear that, Joey. It's the fault of the liberals turning this country into a dangerous free-for-all. Mike, yeah, right. Blame everything on the liberals instead of dealing with the problem, Joey. Well, let me tell you something. It's the fault of that liberal socialist education system that he turned out like that. They teach you to steal and to hack. Mike, they do not teach you to steal. But whose fault is it you turned out like you turned out, Joey? Nobody's. I turned out good. Mike, well, Joey, well, what? Mike, you turned out well, Joey, yeah, whatever. And you know what really ticks me? He could have hacked into something useful like the government of China. Why couldn't he do that? Mike, are you kidding me? You can't just do something like that. It's illegal, Joey. No, it's not. They've been doing it to us for years, so it's perfectly legit. Mike, oh, so you mean if one country violates international law... It's all right to retaliate? Joey. Yeah, exactly. Mike, that's how the world gets a lot worse. You never heard the expression, an eye for an eye and the whole world goes blind? Joey. Who said anything about eyes? I thought we were talking about hacking. Mike. I can't believe myself. A college professor talking to my son who can't even get aphorisms. Joey. Suddenly with a smile. Hey, wait a minute. I just thought of something. Mike stops and looks at him very curious. Joey, Josh needs to be homeschooled, right? Mike, yeah, that would make sense. Joey, so let's get the college professor to do it. I mean, here we are yapping all this nonsense. Mike, yeah, but that never stopped you before. Joey, Josh will never let his mom and me school him with his big mouth and wise-ass ways. Mike, his mom and I. Joey, yeah, whatever. Since he's already going to be corrupted by liberalism, might as well call on the family liberal himself. Mike, I don't know whether to be flattered or insulted. Joey, come on, Dad, we need you. Mike, well, I don't know if I can prepare him for the equivalency. That's a pretty full-time endeavor. Joey, you think we have the time to stay home and miss work? All of a sudden, Josh appears, stunning both of them. He's half-dressed, as is typical for him, ignores them, and goes straight for the kitchen. They both stare toward the kitchen. Joey, he won't eat a morsel at mealtime, but he'll attack the food like the caveman when it's not time to eat. Mike, I'll go talk to him. Leaves the room. Internal, kitchen, night. The refrigerator door is wide open, and Josh's head is stuck way inside, his butt sticking out towards the door, and Mike, who moves in on him. Mike, trying to angle at the fridge. What's there to eat? Josh, lost and confused. I don't know. Mike, come on, move aside, let me at it. Josh moves aside and Mike grabs some chewy chocolate chip cookies. He takes one package and reaches out a second to Josh. Josh, thanks. They munch with satisfaction, eating all the while they talk. Josh, hey, pause. Can you do me a favor? Mike looks at him. Josh, can you let me use your laptop? Like sneak it in without Dad knowing? Mike, Josh, I'd love to, but that wouldn't be right to go behind your parents' backs. Josh, oh, come on, after how much he insults you all the time? Mike, see, that's the difference between me and your dad. He just reacts to what other people do and say. I do the right thing, even if it's unpopular. Josh looks both impressed and superior. Mike, 
And that's your first lesson for your homeschooling. Never abandon your principles and always do the right thing. Josh, I never do abandon my principles. They're just different from yours. You look out for other people. I look out for myself. That's the only way you get ahead. Mike, and where are you now? Josh, oh, this doesn't count. My plan just backfired, but I'll figure out another one. Mike, Josh, you can't figure your way through life. Whether you want to get ahead for yourself or develop a set of principles that takes others into consideration, which I think is the right way and a better way, you've got to learn the rules. That's why we have schooling. Josh, with his finger flicking. Well, I got suspended, so that plan's dead in the water. Mike, no it's not, because you're going to get homeschooled. Josh, yeah, right, like that's going to make a difference. Mike, it'll make a big difference. Josh, yeah, it might if you were my teacher. Mike, well, guess what? Surprise, grins. I am your teacher, Josh. Nah, no, you're not. Dad would never allow that. Besides, it's supposed to be a punishment. Mike, well, here's lesson number two. If a tenured college professor offers to homeschool you, take it. You're never going to get a better ed education to finish out high school. You'll be smarter than all your high school peers. Josh, really? How'd you get Dad to agree to that? Mike, it was actually your dad who suggested it. Josh, you're kidding. Mike, he's my son. He's got to come up with a bright idea at least every once in a blue moon. Josh, ooh, you're fresh. Mike. Yeah, let's keep it between us, like you keep all your other secrets. Josh, still in disbelief. So you're going to teach me? Wow. So how many computer languages do you know? How good are you at, how good are you at cracking codes, Mike? I'm sorry, but this is not going to be about cracking codes. I'm not a computer scientist. I'm a sociology and English professor. Josh, grinning. How are you going to teach me if you don't know computers? Looks like I got to teach you. Mike, please do. One's never too old to learn. The two cookie boxes are completely empty. Internal, living room, night. In the front door walks Samantha with Kamala. Joey, Giselle, and Mike are suddenly transfixed in a kind of staring that would make any stranger uncomfortable. Samantha, come on, guys, don't stare rudely. It's impolite. Kamala smiles and chuckles quietly. Kamala, in a soft, girlish voice. Hi, Samantha, this is my friend Kamala, Giselle. Nice to meet you, Kamala, Kamala. The pleasure's all mine, Joey. Wow, a kid with manners. Can you please teach my children how to respect their parents? She chuckles. Kamala, must be my southern upbringing, Joey. Southern? With a name like Kamala. It's Kamala. Joey, yeah, whatever. Samantha, impatiently. Come on, Kamala. Joey, you know, for a girl, you sure look like a boy. Everybody looks at him with shock. Kamala, excuse me? Samantha, clenching teeth. Dad, you're embarrassing me. Joey, no boys are allowed in your room with you alone. You know that. Samantha, oh my God. Kamala, smiling. It's okay, sir. I'm a girl. Two girls hurry upstairs. Mike, I don't mean to upset you, Joey, but if she likes a boy, she's going to find a way around you. Joey, no, she won't. My word is law around here. Mike, poor Samantha. Joey, and another thing. What's with this boys looking like girls or girls looking like boys? Mike, oh, so you have a problem with transgender? Joey, don't get me wrong. I'm very sensitive to people. Mike, like a Mack truck. Joey, hey, I never make those comments about people being black or gay because I know they're super sensitive and it becomes a federal case. Mike, or Mexican, Joey, they don't count. They're not legal. Mike, most of them are legally allowed to be here. Joey, you should come down to my shop. You'd see how wrong you are. Anyway, I was going to say if she was gay, I'd have no problem. Giselle, yeah, except you wouldn't let her up alone with Samantha. Joey. Yeah, well, that stands to reason. Same reason I don't let her up with boys. Internal, Samantha's from the night. Samantha and Kamala are kissing. All of a sudden, Kamala moves forward again, and this time grabs Samantha toward her and locks her mouth on Samantha's while holding her tightly 
her arms all the way around Samantha as they kiss the way lovers do. Although Samantha at first shifts her eyes with this unexpected deep kiss, she begins to relax into it and enjoy it with a big smile on her face, which causes Kamala to smile brightly. Fade out.